Good afternoon, good afternoon, and good afternoon. Welcome to I Am My Sister's Keeper. I'm your host, Miss Terry Penny. How are you guys doing on this good Friday? I hope everything is going well with you. I hope that you woke up this morning feeling blessed, refreshed, and revived. I hope that you guys went to the Father's house today and worship and praised Him on this Good Friday. I hope that everything has been going your way. I hope that you guys got out and enjoyed this beautiful day. The sun is out, y'all. It's warmed up. It's it's just it's a beautiful day. I hope that everything is going well. Um I did go to service this morning. Um we went to one of our sisters core. Um we went to Cold Springs and the service was wonderful. Uh, we got to hear one of the children sing, children choir sing. It, it was nice, y'all. I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you guys are ready for this. We are on chapter 5. This is, we're getting ready to talk about, or getting ready to be prepared to get into the seals. Um, this right here, the book of seals is just, it's, it's getting us ready for chapter six. Because chapter 6 is talking about the first six seals. So chapter 5 is preparing us for that. So I, I, I hope that you guys are ready. I, I really do. I hope that you guys are taking this very seriously. And, and, and I do mean seriously. I, I hope that you are. I hope that y'all not... Taking this as a joke. Because this is not a laughing matter. This It really isn't. I, um... The things that he says in his book... I, I, I take very seriously. Because if he said it, then he means it. So... I hope that y'all understands that. We're going to, um, give me one second, y'all. Try to make sure everything is straight. Cause it's, I've been trying to, um, trying to see why my, it's like my laptop, it's not showing. what it needs to show. Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes and then I'm going to log back in. We're going to go into prayer and ask the Father and His Son to come down and join us. And then we're going to go right into it. I do apologize for being late. Um, but I'm here now. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you to stand before your throne. Father, I invite you and your son, Jesus Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit to come down once again and join us as we study your words, as we go deeper into your words, as we search each verse, break it down, and dive into it so that we can receive the message that you have in it. So that we can understand, Father, what it is that you are preparing us for. Jesus, we ask that you come down also and teach once again this class what we need to know about this passage. What is the message that you have for us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and join us also and take over the cameras, the audio, and everything else that needs to be done. So to make sure that his children can hear him clearly, can receive the message clearly, Without any interruptions. Father, I ask that you just come and join us and have a seat. And if it's anything that you need to say, then Father, we ask that you just join in. I ask that you hide me behind the cross. Don't let them see me. But let them see your son, Jesus Christ, who lives within me. Don't let them hear my voice. But let them hear the voice of your son, Jesus Christ, who speaks through me. So that they know that these are his words. His message. Let his spirit reach out through me and touch them. So that they know without any doubt that this is the Lord. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, that is teaching this class. That I am just a willing vessel that is being used. Father, I pray that this be pleasing and acceptable to you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you wash and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. So as the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Messiah, our King, steps into this vessel that I step out. That there is no iniquities or transgressions. Father, I ask that you open up my ears Open up my mind, my heart, so that I may receive the words that you want me to speak. That I may hear your voice clearly over everything that may be going on. And that my mind may receive the knowledge and the wisdom that you have for me. So, Jesus, that your words, that your teachings may be spoken to your children. Decrease me. Decrease me and increase you that is in me. Father, I pray 
in your son Jesus Christ's name. I ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name. I declare and decree all things in your son Jesus Christ's name. I seek your face in your kingdom. Amen and amen. So, we're going to do chapter 5, and this is talking about the sealed book. The sealed book. Okay, I think we got it now. Come on, what's going on, baby? I try to have my lot my laptop going too so that if you guys have questions or concerns that I can see them and I can answer them too while we're live and you know we can do it while we're going, but it's like my laptop is, uh, but she gonna work, she gonna get it, she gonna get it, she just having some problems right now, so, chapter five, oh, there, there she is, see, I told you, there she is, See, I told you. Hey, big brother. Yes. I told you, baby. See, that's what I love about my God. <laughs> that's what I love about my God. That's That's why I tell y'all. Don't stress. Don't worry. Don't fret your nerves over nothing. Because if it was meant to happen, he going to make a way for it to happen. <laughs> Chapter 5, the sealed book. It says, now today I'm reading from, we're doing the Bible verses from, I'm doing it from the King James Version. And I'm doing... It's four, excuse me, it's only 14 verses in chapter 5. 14 verses, but they're in sections. From verses 1 through 4 is talking about the sealed books. Verse 5 through 7 is the lion and the lamb. Uh, From 8... To 14, it talks about worship. That's how my King James Bible is. It, it breaks it down into the sections that it talks about. Then, I'm going to the MacArthur Bible Commentary, where it has the same verses in there, but it has a breakdown of those verses. So, I'm going to use the reference, the Bible. I'm reading from the Bible first. And the commentary breakdowns that I have in my Bible. Then we're going to go to my reference book, which is the MacArthur Bible Commentary. And then we're going to do Haley's Bible Handbook, which goes into a deeper breakdown of those verses. And then y'all know tomorrow we get into the study guide and handout. So, 
It says, And I saw in the right hand. If you want to follow along in your Bibles with me, I recommend, y'all, I recommend this. This is the reason of having Bible study so that you can follow along in your Bibles. That's why I say, if you need me to hold up before I start reading, let me know and I will hold up, let you find what you need to find, and then I will start reading. Because I don't want you to say, Terry says such and such and such. When I'm telling you where we're at. Revelation chapter 5. So I'm going to ask this question right now. Are you ready to start? Okay, well, do you want me to go ahead and just start reading, Big Brother, or you want me to give you time to find your Bible? Okay, it says, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. The commentary. And I saw... In the right hand signifies power. The right hand signifies power. Of him who sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. The seven seals signifies that the time of Jacob's trouble is about to begin. This is a sign that the tribulations 
are about to start. Which will rapidly bring to a conclusion that which must be done. All of this must happen and before Christ's return. Sin and wickedness must be wiped out, extinct, extinguished before Christ's return. So everything that we're about to go through was already written before it even happened. That's why so many of the prophets before have seen visions of all of this that was going to come. Ezekiel, Daniel, John, Jeremiah, all these prophets spoke of this time right here. They thought that it was going to happen in their future. But what they were seeing was our future. Verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? Commentary. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. This strong angel is probably Gabriel as evidenced by Gabriel's appearance to Daniel. Remember, Gabriel is the same angel who appeared to Mary, Joseph, Abraham. He's a messenger of God. Gabriel is the one who took the message to John and Patmos. So he had this, this, this strong, confident, mighty voice. He was a speaker. Michael, on the other hand, was a fighter. He was the captain of the army in, in, in heaven. But Gabriel was the... Gabriel and Michael are two important archangels in heaven. When God wants to Send, send an angel to give you an, an important message from him, he will send Gabriel. When God wants to send a, a strong, powerful angel to fight a battle, he send Michael. It says, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? 
This implies moral fitness. Roman 1 4. Now I'm going to go to Romans 1 and 4. And I'm going to read that right quick. Romans. And I'm also put that in the comment box when I do the references. Romans 1 and 4 says. And it's already marked. Come on here. It says. And declare to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And declare to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. Now, the commentary for this verse is and declared to be the Son of God with power. The commentary says he was the Son of David regarding his humanity and the Son of God rego re regarding his deity. So his human side is with David, his heritage, his lineage. But his deity side is with God because he was from God. He is God. Remember, Jesus said, that the Father is in me and I in the Father. For he is I and I is he. They are one. They are equal. They are the same. So he is the Son of Man, but he is also the son of God. But because he came down here on earth. He humbled. His deity. And his. Human side. Was shown more. He. He portrayed his humanity more than his deity. He lived a human life so that he could see what it was like to be us. He had to live his human life to see how we would react to him. Even though he healed the sick. Fed the hungry. Even though he did things that no one could explain. They still rejected him. They still... They still did things to him that should not have been done. He was still betrayed. Jesus was discriminated against because of where he was from. Jesus, they tried to stone him, but... He got away. They tried to throw him off a cliff, but he got away. Actually, he didn't get away. He walked away. 
every time they try to end his life before it's time, he walked away. But little do they know that he had the power in him to take each and every one of their lives in a split second. All he had to do is snap his fingers. These people had cried out for years. For God to send someone to save them. But because he didn't send who they wanted him to send. They, they didn't accept him. They took him as a fraud. An imposter. What it says again, and declare to be the son of God with power. He was the son of David regarding his humanity and the son of God regarding his deity. He was both. It says, according to the spirit of holiness, presents another name for a Holy Spirit. By the resurrection from the dead, the Jews crucified Jesus because he claimed to be the son of God. God resurrected him because he was the son of God. His own people killed him because he said that he was the son of God. But God resurrected him because he was telling the truth. The Jews, if the Jews would have understood and known who it was that they were really putting on that cross. I think, you know, I, I in fact, I don't think, I, if they knew who Jesus was, before they put him on that cross. I think this world would have been a whole lot different than what it was, what it is now. I don't think a lot of things that are going on right now would be going on. But because it had to be the way that it is. That's why it happened the way it did. Because I don't think it was meant for Jesus to walk this earth as a human the whole time. I, I Sometimes, sooner or later, he would have had to be ascended back to heaven. It would have been nice for him to stay down here with us in human form, but I don't think it was meant for him to stay down here. I think it was meant for him to stay up there.
So you see, God uses us to do his will, to accomplish his goal. He used, he knew how the Jewish people were. He knew how they were going to think and how they were going to act before they, before they even knew what they were going to do. He already knew. And he used that. He knew that they were stuck in the laws of Moses. He knew that as soon as Jesus came and started teaching and preaching the way that he did, that he was going to cause problems, a riff with the people. Okay, y'all, excuse me. I need to get a pillow. I need to get a pillow. I need to get a pillow. Oh, my gosh. Hold on one second, y'all. I'm telling y'all, for Christmas, I'm buying me a chair. I'm buying me a chair. Yeah. <laughs> um, who that's so much better. He does the same today. He knows how we're going to react how we're going to act. He knows exactly what we're going to do. He knows our facial expressions. He knows our body language. He knows how we're going to respond to certain things in our life. He knows if we're going to be humble about things or if we're going to fly off the handle. He knows what's in our hearts. And he takes those things and he used them. He used them. Now, if a situation happens in your life and you handle it in the right way, then he's going to use it for your good. He's going to use it so that the outcome would not only benefit you, but it'll glorify him. If you have that same situation and you have malicious thoughts or evil thoughts in your mind or in your heart to do then it's going to work against you it's going to backfire on you you see what I'm saying the Jews crucified his son because he said that he was his son. They thought that they had killed him, that they had got rid of him, that they wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. But what they failed to realize was is that now they're going to have to stand before him because they're going to see him again. 
Because the same God that he said that he was, that was his father, it's the same God that resurrected him from the dead on Easter Sunday. Do y'all understand that? Let me say it again. When you're in a situation and you handle it with humility and you do it the right way and you defuse the situation and you try to solve it without yelling and screaming and fussing and cussing and fighting and shooting each other and bringing harm to one another. When you try to do it the right way, he will use that situation for your good. Because then it will benefit you and glorify him. But if you choose to be in that same situation and it brings harm to someone or a life is lost or there's fighting, cussing or an escalated or elevated argument then it will backfire on you and you will suffer the consequences do you understand that that is what happened to the Jews That's what happened when they crucified Jesus. They were in a situation where they could have just humbled themselves and accepted what Jesus Christ said. And accepted them, accepted him as their king. Listen to his teaching. And repented. And accepted Christ. And received everlasting life. And salvation. Which would have benefit them. And glorified God. But. They didn't do that. They became angry. They accused Jesus of blasphemy. And they crucified. Him on the cross. And it backfired on them instead of giving them peace at what they did now they suffered and they still suffering today and they gonna continue to suffer one last time through the great trials and tribulations And once again, they're going to call out to God to send someone to save them from the Antichrist. And again, God is going to send his son, Jesus Christ, to save his people. 
And when the Jews gathered together in Israel and stand before Jesus with their heads hung low in shame, they're going to realize who it was that they placed on that cross. That was Romans 1, verse 4. Romans 1, verse 4. Now I'm going back to Revelations. And that was just verse 2 of Revelation. Getting good already. Getting good already. Who is getting good already? Verse 3 says, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. I'm going to read that again. No man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. We should, this is the commentary, we should look very carefully at the words, no man. No human, no flesh in heaven, in earth, or under the earth was able to open this book. There is nothing on this planet that can open up the book and the seals. We are so full of sin and transgressions that we can't get nowhere near this book. Four says, and I wept, be, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Listen to that again. It says, and I wept, I cried much because no man was found worthy. He cried because there was no human. Not in heaven, not in the earth, not underneath the earth. That could read the book or even open it. It says... This pertains to the fact that this book is so very, very important. It contains not only the information regarding the coming judgment upon this earth, but as well the message that this judgment as tendered by God will ultimately lead to the redemption of the earth. I'm going to read that part again. This pertains to the fact that this book is so very important. It contains not only the information regarding that coming judgment upon the earth, it tells exactly 
what God is planning to do to mankind and this earth in the trials and tribulations. It is his plans. But as well the message that this judgment as tendered by God will ultimately lead to the redemption of this earth. The redemption. Where it will be it will be made new. It will be transformed and All, everything would just be wiped clean, reformed, reborn, just it's going to be so magnificently oh y'all it can you imagine a new heaven and a new earth? Can you just imagine what that will be like? New grass, new trees, new everything. All the bloodshed and, and, and fighting and horror that has been going on on this earth from, from the time that, that, that humans were first placed on it up until the time that the last body was buried after the battle of Armageddon, Satan has been put away for good in the lake of fire and brimstone. All the, the blood from the battle has been washed away and cleansed. Every, I just get chills just thinking about it. Everything is just clean. It's like a rebirth of everything. Now that was verse 1 through 4 talking about the sealed book and what it contains. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the MacArthur Bible Commentary, and we're going to see what verse 1 and 4 says in there. And here we go. Okay, 5-1. A scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. It says... This is typically of various kinds of contracts in the ancient world, including deeds, marriage, marriage contracts, rental and lease agreements, and wills. The inside of the scroll contains all the details of the contracts, and the outside or back contains a summary of the documents. In this case, it's almost certainly is a deed, the title deed to the earth. Sealed with seven seals, Romans sealed their wills seven times on the edge 
at each row to prevent unauthorized entry. Hebrews title deeds requires a minimum of three witnesses and three separate seals with more important transactions requiring more witnesses and seals. So this seal is like a title deed to the earth. So remember, all this has to happen. All these things must go on because at the end, the Father is given the new heaven and the new earth to Jesus for his atonement that he paid on the cross. So he's handing the deeds to the earth to Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can open up the seals. He's the only one that can open up the books. He's the only one worthy to do that. This is his gift. Why would anyone else open these things except the one who it belongs to? The new heaven and the new earth belongs to Jesus. The people that will be inhabiting the new earth and the new heaven belongs to Jesus. One people, one king. Oh, come on. What? See, that that's some that's a note right there that should have been. This, this is why I I love having Bible study because it's it's a pith it, it, it's it's knowledge it's knowledge. That's something that's a note right there that should have been written down. This is why we go. This is why things are happening the way it is happening. This is what was planned all along. This is what was planned all along. God was planning on giving his son all of this from the beginning. This is what he was, when he put Adam and Eve here the first time, if they had not had messed up, all of this was going to be for Jesus. But because they sinned and cursed the land. We had to go through all of this to get to this point. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He said that if, if you... Read and ask for understanding. Ask him to give you understanding. Then you would understand why he is doing what he is doing. You would understand the book of Revelations. 
would help you to understand why he is doing what he is doing. Now I understand. I, I'm starting to get it. He has to weave out all the unclean and wickedness on this earth. Cleanse the earth. Rebuild it. Take it back to where it was first. Take it back to where it was like where he first created it. And then give it to his son like he was going to do in the beginning. He's taking us back to the beginning. Do you... He's taking us back to the beginning. Oh. He's taking us back to the beginning. Yes. 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 He's taking us back. He's taking us back to the beginning. That is why he's so adamant about us repenting and going back to our first love, the cross. That's why he's so adamant about us repenting. <laughs> Oh, I love you. 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 I love you so much. 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 Oh, I love you so much. 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 Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much. Um... Burst, I'm still in MacArthur's 5-2. Strong angel. The identity of this angel is uncertain, but it may refer to the angel Gabriel, who names mean strength of God. Strength of God. Daniel 8.16. Y'all, <laughs> I am so happy right now. I am so happy right now. Y'all, oh, y'all, I am so happy right now. I am, y'all, I am running around. I am running. I am running right now. I am running right now. I, um, Y'all, he, mm. 
Give me a, just give me a second. Give me a second, please. Give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. We we got through the whole half the middle of the book. You are so amazing. You are so Okay, okay, okay. Five three says, "Heaven or on the earth or under the earth." A common biblical expression denoting the entire universe, but not intended to teach three precise divisions. A common biblical expression denoting the entire universe. That means no one, no man in the universe is able to open or look in or open the seals. There was none worthy to do this. The next section, I'm back in the book of Revelations. It says, The lion and the lamb. The lion and the lamb. It says, verse 5, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David has prevailed to the open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. Open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Commentary. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, states that man's dilemma has been solved. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof, presents Jesus Christ. Problem solved. Six says, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. <laughs> and I beheld. And lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Commentary. Oh, wait. 
You are the child of a living God who defeated death on the cross. He gave you power over darkness. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. 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 What the cherubims be saying at the throne? Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, the one who is and is and is to come. Yes. 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 Come on. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yes. 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 Mm. He said, and in every capacity, so there is no excuse, no excuse for the lack of victory. No excuse. There is no excuse why you send that sugar coating his words. There is no excuse why you sitting there on and lying to his people. There is no excuse why you making them feel comfortable in their sins. There is no excuse why you can't get out and talk and preach and minister his words to his people. There is no excuse why you hiding in your house. There is no excuse why you can't get out there and feed those who are hungry. There is no excuse why you sitting on that money. There is no excuse why you can't go to church on Sundays. There is no excuse why you cannot spend time with him. There is no excuse why you can't say a prayer or give him Thanksgiving when you open your eyes in the morning before you get out of bed. There is no excuse why you cannot spend at least 10 to 15 minutes with that man who sits on the throne that wake you up every morning. There is no excuse. When he has given you the power. To do what you need to do. There is no excuse. So you need to stop making them. Come on Jesus. Come on in the room. Come on. Come on. Come on. Talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 He also says, 
and seven eyes denotes total, perfect, pure, and complete illumination of all things spiritual, which is again made possible for you and me by the cross. If the believer makes the cross the object of his faith, he will never be drawn away by false doctrines. Okay? If the cross is the object of your faith, can't nobody steer you wrong. Can't nobody come at you with this wishy-washy. Can't nobody tell you nothing different. You'll know when something is not right. And then you're going to get up and you're going to move around. Can't nobody distract you from that cross. Can't nobody tell you I don't care who they are. You serve one God. You listen to one God. You obey one God. I don't care who you work for. Hate me. I don't care. Dislike me. I don't care. Do what you do. I don't care. I serve one God and one God only. I listen to one God and one God only. I move when he say move. I do what he say do and I say what he says. If you don't like it, then you take it up with him. But if he don't tell me to do something, guess what, boo-boo? I'm not doing it. I don't care how much you emphasize, sugarcoat it, wrap it up, put it in a pretty bow and throw some sprinkles on top of it. <laughs> Terry's not moving. You can't shake me, scare me, or none of that. I serve a God that's so powerful, baby. He will take a tidal wave and whip you right on out of here. Don't play with me. You better know who my daddy is. <laughs> Boy, my big brother's on fire. My big brother's on Man, come on, come on, come on. He says, I'm going to read that again. And seven eyes denotes total, perfect, pure, and complete illumination of all things spiritual, which is again made possible for you and me by the cross. If the believer makes the cross the object of his faith, he will never be drawn away by false doctrine, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth, signifying, this is the commentary, signifying that the Holy Spirit and all his perfection and universality, university, Universal, okay, skip it, can't pronounce it right now, function entirely within the perimeters of the finished work of Christ. In other words, it is required, it is required that we ever make the cross the object of our faith, which gives the Holy Spirit latitude and guarantees the dominion and the illumination 
Isaiah 11.2, Romans 8.2. That would also be in the comment box when I put in y'all reference verses. Yes, 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 yes. When you make the cross the center of your faith, when you make the cross your main focus and what Christ did on the cross that gives lean way for the Holy Spirit to come in to wash you to cleanse you to get all that gunk and goo and residue and all that stinky stuff out of you and wash you clean and make you white as snow <laughs> Yeah, to make you white as snow, to purify you. Woo, baby. <laughs> hey, baby, look at here, look at here, look at here, y'all. Look at here. Y'all look at here, okay? Let me tell y'all what's going on right now in up in here, okay? Let me tell you what's going on up in here. See, right now, I'm up up there in my, at, at, on my 92 acres of land. And me and my two Labradoodles, my caramel and my chocolate Labradoodle dogs, are outside running around, playing, flipping in the backyard. Okay? That's where I'm at. Yes, yes. And that's where I'm at. And right now, I'm, I'm shouting, I'm playing, I'm, I'm, I'm praising, I'm worshiping, and I'm doing the whole nine yards, okay? Yes, I'm, I'm, the neighbors are out there shouting and screaming with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yes, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. That's where Terry Penny is right now. Yes, okay? Uh, because, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's where I'm at. Now, when my brother finished teaching this class, do I want to come back down here? No, no, I do not. I, I, I'm being honest with y'all. I want to stay up there. I, I mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Verse seven. Verse seven. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat upon the throne. Jesus came and took the book out of the right hand of the Father. Yes, he did. Who sat upon the throne. All of heaven stand and are as the Lamb steps forward to take the book out of God the Father's hand. My big brother did that. My big brother did that. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross for our sins to pay our debt Something that he did not have to do, but he did it anyway because he loved us and didn't want to see us suffer. When he did that, he tore the veil so that we can see the Father. We can, we can pray to the Father ourselves by using his name. He stepped to the Father. And reached out and took the book from out of his hands. What? Let's see. It says. Going to MacArthur. Going to MacArthur. MacArthur says, verse 5, 
the lion of the tribe of Judah. One of the earliest titles for the Messiah. Oh, there's another. It said, it speaks of his fierceness and strength, which although glimpsed in his first coming, do not appear in their fullness until the moment anticipated here. One of the earliest titles of the Messiah. Genesis 49 verses 8 through 12. That was one of his earliest names. The Lion of Judah. It speaks of his fierceness and his strength. Oh. And that is so true. He was fierce. Oh, yes, he was. Especially when they was selling things and 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 it's just defiling his father's house and he just went ballistic and said that his father was his father's house was a house of prayer and they turned it into a a, a den of thieves And he just started, y'all, I, I tell everybody about this because that scene there, that, that showed that he 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 was, he, he got angry. He got mad. He, 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 he was like, he was upset. He even got mad with the Pharisees. You know, I mean, it, it's so much. That you can take. I mean. It, it, you know. It, it's just like. How. how it, it's just so much. That you can comprehend. With some of the things. That people do. I mean. You mean to tell me that. You, you can't. You, you really. You just. You really. You really don't. under. You really did not. Understand that what you just did did not make sense. You you really didn't see that. You you really could not comprehend that what the what you just said, the words that came out of your mouth did not make sense. Do you just not you really did not understand that what you just did, you don't understand that that hurts somebody. You you can't see that. You were physically bringing pain to somebody by what you was doing. You could not, you 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 seriously could not understand that when you holding a gun to somebody's head, that the consequences that you're about to do. You really cannot understand that you're about to take somebody's life for no reason over stupid stuff. You really can't understand that. You can't understand that you standing there arguing over some person that you don't even need to be arguing over. Because obviously, if they messing with this person and they messing with you, then they go mess with somebody else. So why are you two sitting here arguing over this person? It's beyond me. He got mad. He he's he gets upset. He put those same traits in us. Especially when it comes to things dealing with the father. They was at the temple selling. They had the entrance of the temple blocked off where they were selling animals for sacrifice. You, 
You, you, you mean, I mean, y'all don't. His strength. They thought they could break him. They thought they could wear him down. He was stronger than they thought. How can you wear down God? This was the son of God. Where do you think his strength came from? Well, where do you think our strength comes from? Why do you think so many of his followers are willing to give their lives for him? Why do you think we're so zealous and willing to keep fighting to the bitter end? We get our traits from him. We, we, we get... <laughs> We, everything, everything we get from him. Ain't no shortcut in it. Ain't no shortcut in it. Everything we need, we get from him. Because we believe in him. Our trust is in him. It says, which although glimpsed in his first coming, which was when he was a newborn, lying in a manger, do not appear in their fullness. Because he was a baby. Until the moment anticipated here. His second coming. The root of David. Another clearly mess messianic title. Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. It anticipates his being a descendant of David. Who with devastating force. Will compel the wicked of the earth. To succumb to his authority. Six. Lamb. Hearing of a lion. John turns to see a lamb. God requires the Jews to bring the Passover lamb. Into their houses. Four days. Essentially make, making it a pet. Before it was to be violent, violent, <laughs> violently slain. Exodus 12, 3 and 6. This is the true Passover lamb. God's son. Isaiah 53, 7, Jeremiah eleven nineteen, and John 1, 29. As though it had been slain, the scars from its slaughter are still clearly visible, but is standing. It is alive. The hands, the feet, the scars on his back where the crown was. Piercing on the side. It's 
still visible. But he was alive. He was alive. <laughs> when he came and, 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 and showed himself to his disciples. He showed them. Him. Them. His scars. He showed them where the nails went through his hands. He showed them where his feet. And he showed them his scars on his side. But he was alive. Seven hours. In scripture, horns always symbolizes power because in the animal kingdom, they are used to exert power and inflict wounds in combat. Seven horns signifies complete or perfect power. Unlike other defenseless lamb, this one has complete sovereign power. He has complete sovereign power over everything, all dominions. Jesus has complete power over the universe. Seven eyes, seven spirits. Okay, um, <laughs> tomorrow, no, 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 Sunday, Sunday, Sunday we will do verses 8 through 14. Um, I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 from Haley's. Oh, I, love you. I love you so much. I... I just, oh my gosh, I just, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you so much. I just, you know, ooh, I love you so much. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to just read this. Right quick. It says, the sealed scroll. The theme of chapter 4 is the creative power of God. Of chapter 5. The redemptive power of Christ. John continues to describe the scene in heaven. The sealed scroll. The scroll contains the secrets of the future. The final stage of Christ's redemptive work. All creation wants to know the outcome, but the only way to open the book is to break the seventh seal. 
and the only the only one person and all of creation can do this not because he is strong but because he is worthy that person of course is jesus as the seven seals are broken by jesus one by one there comes into john's vision a panorama of the future rolling on to the end the opening of each of the seven seals results in terrible happenings on earth. It is not until all the seals have been broken that the ultimate future becomes clear. The new heaven and the new earth. God living with his redeemed and restored creation. The last seal was the most terrible of the seven. When it was open, it turned out to contain seven trumpets, each of which hurled more disasters. And some interpreters see the seven trumpets as containing the seven bowls filled with plagues that are poured on the earth before the final end. Thus, we see seven seals, six, one through eight. I'm, I'm sorry, Six one and eight one, seven trumpets, eight two, and eleven nineteen, and seven bowls fifteen through sixteen. Many interpreters, however, see the seven seals and the seven trumpets in chapter six through eleven as the complete sequence of judgment. In the Inter interpretation in this interpretation it is assumed that the seven bow judgment occurs concurrently with the seven trumpet judgment however the bow judgment are not shown in john until the visions in chapter 15 and 16. the same event takes place at both the sounding of the seven trumpet 11 15 through 19. And after the angel pours out the seven bowl, chapter 16, verse 17 through 18, all heaven reverberates with the glad hallelujahs of final victory. 11, 15. As God's wrath show it, as God's wrath is show, is showered on the earth in the form of lightning, thunder, and earthquake. And a great hailstorm. And y'all, when we get to talk about these hailstorms and this earthquake, if the if, if the things that we get to talk about with the bows and the seals and 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 the the trumpets that that comes with them, if this don't do something to you. Hmm. Chapter 12 through 20 are then the retelling of the events of the preceding chapters. The seven seals and the seven trumpets together form the main framework of revelations and carry the story swiftly forward to the end. Then the writer, following a common literary Literary method of scriptures return to the beginning and starting with chapter 12 begins over again with additional or explanatory details. The Lion of Judah is the Lamb. At the beginning of the book of Revelation, Christ appears as the warrior in, the, in relations to his church. He is called a lion. But when the lion appears, he is a lamb. Throughout the remaining chapters, Christ is generally called the lion. The lamb represents the lion represents power, the lamb sacrifice and ultimately victory. The lamb has come to power 
through his death. The secret of Christ's power is his suffering, paradoxical as it may seem. Seven eyes represent all knowledge. The seven horns, all conquering might. Christ now, mm, no. Christ not only knows the future, but he has the power to control it. Did you hear that? Christ not only knows the future, but he has the power to control it. The rest goes with 8 through 14, which we'll do tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, Sunday. Y'all know Saturday, I'm, I'm not doing nothing Saturday. Okay, so <laughs> that's, that's that. So, Sunday, we will pick up with verse 8 through 14. And then Monday... We will start the study guides and study sheets for chapter 5 and go into more details of the verses. Y'all, I, um, I love it. I love it. I love it when my big brother Jesus Christ take over a class and start teaching. Because I I get I learn I learn and y'all I'm telling you y'all get your pen get your paper and I'm telling you it's gonna be some notes that you need to take when you see me with my hand out right now because I had to take notes because it it what we learned out of this and I read out of the MacArthur. Bible commentary that was telling us right there what the book of Revelation and all this what we was going through was for. Why he is giving us to repent of our sins. Because in the beginning, when the Garden of Eden was brought about and Adam and Eve was put in there to take care of the land, to take care of the animals, to do what they were supposed to do. And Eve, who was gullible, listening to the serpent, took a bite of the fruit. And then Adam, who was standing right there with her, took a bite to, they cursed the land. They cursed all of us. When Satan decided to get it in his big head that he wants to be above God and do everything better than God and get all the worship and all the praise and all this and got kicked out, came down here because he got mad, we, 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 we got screwed. So everyone that was born was born in sin and corruption. But God gave us free will. We could choose him or we can choose this world. The majority of us chose this world. Which means sin grew. Then we had all these other people. Because I'm not going to say what I want this, I was going to say. I'm so glad that my brother is still here with me and inside of me. To keep me on the right frequency. Um, came down it, and then they start doing things uh, that was not right with God. And then all things broke loose. Then he brought the flood. And then he said he wasn't going to do that no more because he's not going to destroy the earth because of man. And then he sent out his prophets and prophetess and, and, and all his people out to try to bring the people back to him. and bring the, and bring But they didn't want to listen. So what he had to, y'all, right now, I, 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 <laughs> it, it, I could 
he he they didn't want to listen. So he he told me to keep talking. So I'm gonna keep talking. So they didn't want to listen. So he sat there and he he showed them y'all y'all don't want y'all want to be disobedient. Y'all want to rebel. So okay, well let me show y'all. I'm finna chastise y'all. I'm finna show y'all my strengths. Since y'all wanna braise up against me, y'all want to be grown. Y'all want to act like y'all grown. Okay, well I'm finna I'm finna treat y'all like y'all grown. And he brought their enemies against them. They went into captivity for 70 years. And, and, and what makes it so bad, this is the thing. It, they, they broke the Sabbath. Every seven years, you're supposed to let your land, if you are a farmer and you grow vegetables on the land, it don't matter where you are, what you grow. Every seven years, you're supposed to let that land rest. It's called a Sabbath for the land. Yes, that land is supposed to rest. Just like on the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, you're supposed to rest your body, your maids, your maid servants, your man servants, your children, everybody in your household is supposed to rest on the Sabbath. Your land is supposed to rest too every seven years. Every seven years, your maid servants are supposed to be set free. It's in the book. But they didn't do that. So he told them when Hezekiel and them set their maid servants and their maid servants free. But as soon as they found out that Nebuchadnezzar and them had left, they didn't know that it was only part of their army that had left. They thought it was their whole army that left. They called their man servants and their maid servants back to work. That was a no-no. Because see, now since you done brought them back into captivity and back into slavery, guess where you going? Into slavery. So when Nebuchadnezzar came upon them, where did they go? Into captivity. For how long? 70 years. Why? Because they did not let the land rest. Okay. And then you still did not repent and come back to Christ. You still kept doing what you wanted to do. See, Hezekiel was supposed to make a covenant with Nebuchadnezzar so that Nebuchadnezzar can protect, protect the people. But instead, what did he do? He went and did what he wanted to do, and he went and made a covenant with the Egyptians. But what happened? The Egyptians sent their big army thinking they're going to come against Nebuchadnezzar. But what they didn't know was that Nebuchadnezzar was under the influence of God. So when God sent Nebuchadnezzar army against the Egyptians, the Egyptians hauled tail back to Egypt. They got scared. They ran. So now they have nobody to protect them. So what happened? Nebuchadnezzar came in there and cleaned house. But see, Nebuchadnezzar got overzealous. He got greedy. That's why the Medes and the Persians took over Babylon. Y'all, come on. Come on. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He's been doing this for so long. He's been sending his people out for so long, trying to get everybody to understand, hey, we need to repent. We need to go back to where we first started. We need to go back to the cross. We need to repent. We need to come together as a people and repent. We need to come together as a people and repent. We need to come back as a people and repent. We need to make the cross our focus. We need to get back to the cross and focus. We need to get back to the cross and focus. He, We've been preaching this for over 2,000 something years. We need to get back to the cross and repent. 
Because the end times are here. We need to get back to the cross and repent and become one people. But we got so much hatred in the world over color. Or, or what neighborhood you live in. What kind of car you drive. What kind of clothes you wear. How big you are. Oh, if you're tall, short, if you, you're fat, skinny, you're black, white, Mexican, it don't matter. We always hating each other over something. How much money you got? How much money you don't have? And it's still going on today. We teaching our children how to hate each other. And God is still saying, I need you to repent. I need you to repent. I need you to make the cross the focus. I need you to come back to me. I need you to get under my protection. Because the judgment that I'm bringing upon this earth is going to be devastating. It's going to be lives taken. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be the worst thing that mankind has ever seen. I need you to come back to the cross. I need you to listen to what my people are saying and understand what is about to happen. Because some of us think that we have all the time in the world. We are procrastinating. We think that we know what's best for us. We think that we know how to live. We know. We know what we're doing. Some of us think we don't need God. Some of us think that the things that we have, we did by the sweat and blood of our own hands. Some of us think that We did this. We struggled to get this. We put in the time and the effort to do this. We worked to get this. But remember this. They nailed a man to the cross because he said he was the son of God. They thought they was doing something because they were religious leaders. But they forgot they were dealing with a powerful and mighty God. And he raised that man off the cross because he was his son. And now they going to have to stand before him for judgment. So you can say right now that you are the master of your destiny. But I promise you this. When you stand before the real master of your destiny. Let's see how brave you're going to be. Or are you going to be like the ones that go hide in the caves in the mountains and tell the mountains to fall upon you and hide you because you won't be able to face him. It's time for the soft voices of the shepherds and the teachers and the evangelists and the missionaries and the prophets and the prophetess and, and the people of God. It's time for the soft voices, the tender voices, the gentle whispers. It's time to turn up the volume. 
because they can't hear you. It's time to be heard. Because he's coming. He's coming. Things are starting to unfold and unravel as we speak. He's coming. How much time do we have? Who knows? When is he coming? Who knows? It's time for your voices to be heard. And not to be muffled. It's time for the truth to be told. And not to be silenced. It's time for the sword to be drawn. And cuts to be made. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I stand before your throne. Heavenly Father, I stand before your throne with arms wide open, screaming your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for coming down and sitting with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching this class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just doing what you do. Just doing what you do. Father, I pray that this class has been pleasing and acceptable to you. That it has glorified you and, and, and lifted you up and, and has blessed your kingdom. Jesus, Jesus, you are mighty, you are mighty, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, Father, thank you so much. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, I declare and decree all things. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray to you this. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, I seek your face in your kingdom. In your son Jesus Christ's name. I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you Jesus. 
Thank you. I, I don't have any, nothing else to say but just. Thank you. This mine to just. You're, you're just awesome. You are, you're so awesome. You are so awesome. You're so awesome. You're so awesome. You guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your good Friday. I hope that this Bible study lesson has touched each and every one of you guys. I hope that y'all truly got something out of this one. If y'all ain't got nothing out of now lesson, which I hope y'all did. But I really hope y'all got something out of this one. Know that God loves each and every one of you. Know that no matter what you go through, no matter what trials and tribulations you have, no matter what the situation is, know that all you have to do is call on his name. Jesus. Jesus. That's all you got to say. Jesus. And he will reach his hands out to you and pull you out of that pit that you, that you dug yourself into. And know that Miss Terry loves each and every one of you both near and far. And all around this big crazy world. To the moon and back. Oh my gosh. It is a, y'all, this has, baby, look. I can't even, I, you know how, how them, how them kids say, you know, when they get a, a Christmas present that they love so much and they be like, this is the best day ever. Well, y'all, this has been the best day ever. Because, yeah, y'all have a good night. Y'all be blessed. I will see y'all Sunday because if, if Good Friday was like this, I can just imagine what my Sabbath is going to be like tomorrow, baby. I just, whoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all be good and y'all enjoy yourselves. And thank y'all for joining me tonight. I will see y'all Sunday. Remember, we're going to do 8 through 14. And then Monday, we're going to start the study sheets and, and the printouts for uh, chapter 5. And then y'all, I am so serious. When we start chapter 6, I need y'all to be ready. I really, really need y'all to be ready. So y'all have a good night, and I will see y'all then. Mwah. Oh.